I'm definitely gonna have to adjust that. Okay. Easy to go out. Okay, man. Go. Go. Okay. Sorry, my light needs out. <laughs> go, my light out. So this light has to go. There we go. That's much better. And we're live again. <laughs> I'm back. I'm back from my trip. Uh, as some of you know, I went all the way out to beautiful <laughs> Ohio, all the way across the almost all the way across the country. And I even stopped over and visited my buddy uh, after that. Went to visit my buddy Brian Tooley at Brian Tooley Racing. Got to see him, Brandon, Ty, all the guys over there. Very cool. They were doing some cool spin, talk, spin tron testing over there. 9,500 RPM with hydraulic roller stuff. Pretty cool. So we'll, we'll be doing some stuff on that, hopefully. But uh, what I want to talk about tonight is one of the things I was doing today was how you guys probably know him. I uh, was helping Todd today after I, I got back, by the way, uh, late last night or early this morning, more, more accurately, about 1.30. And then it dawned on me that with the time change when I left, I went 1,450 or 60 miles um, just stopping for gas, so straight through. And then when I did the math, I'm like, oh, I've been up for 22 and a half hours. <laughs> I don't recommend that, by the way. So it was a um, it was a long trip. But what I did was when I stopped off, um, I, I my goal the next morning, I, I stopped once after leaving from Bardstown, and my goal was to get to somewhere near the border of uh, Utah and Wyoming because they have fireworks there. So I wanted to look at the fireworks stand that was there, and I wanted to get there, arrive there when it was going to be open. <laughs> so I had to schedule the travel time and the time there and then the time difference and and all that so that it all worked out it did and after i went in there i'm like oh there's still lots of time left i'm just going to keep driving at least i'll get through you know utah and maybe into nevada maybe bonneville or whatever i'm like i'm already here and as i went through um the the border of utah and nevada you gain another hour like man look here's another hour of driving so i just kept going uh, it, it was a long way. That's my farthest that I've ever driven in. It's not technically nonstop because obviously you have to stop for gas, but that's all that I did was I would just stop, get gas. Maybe, maybe while I was getting gas, go in and grab something to eat or whatever real quick, you know, truck stop kind of stuff. And then, and then keep hammering down. So that it was, that was a long trip for me, but I'm back and I'm, I couldn't wait. Can't wait to see Lisa and the boys and stuff, and it's it's awesome to be back home. And and now I get to do some more live feeds with you guys and tell you all about the cool stuff that happened out at the car farm, um, including a, a mistake that I made. And the reason I bring this up because I was helping Todd today, and when I was helping Todd, I um, uh, Dean, I don't know what you're doing there, but I'm going to get rid of that stuff. I don't I don't know what you're talking about there, but it's doesn't seem like it's helping. Um, the so I was talking to Todd today, and he I was helping him with the tune on his turbo. He's got a turbo LS and some kind of truck, and so I was helping work him work through some of the stuff because there were some differences on there. He said that he got some information from Matt, which Matt is Matt's a tuner actually, and I'm and I'm definitely not as you guys as you guys know. But I was looking at the files that he gave him, and I'm like. There's no way that, and, and I'm, and so you guys know, I'm not, I'm not calling Todd out, and I'm not calling Matt out. What I'm doing is calling myself out because I'm, I'm getting somewhere to, the, I'm getting to a point there. Um, but I was looking at these files, and I'm like, there's no way Matt would run this much timing on this kind of application. And as it turned out, that was was actually a methanol pro, <laughs> a methanol file for the Holly, and so it didn't need to be used as a 91 file, you know. So, so we got, I got through all that stuff. And, uh, and and the reason I bring that up is because, and you guys know this, one of the worst things that you can do to your vehicle is, um, and I, and we and the thing is, we all get excited about putting it together, especially a turbo motor. And even if you go out and you run low boost and <laughs> uh, take precautions, you always want to go out and run it. And the first thing you want to do is, oh, let's go, let's feel the boost, let's let's see what it does. Wow! And you're like nailing it down the road and building boost and doing all this stuff. And, and honestly, not knowing whether or not you have the right timing in it, whether or not you have the right amount of fuel in it, not knowing any of that stuff. And so, again, like I said, I'm, I was trying to help him out, and I'm not calling, I'm not calling Todd out. Th this story is actually about how easy it is to do that. 
because I did exactly the same thing. <laughs> this is a story about the Omni. Um, so the goal for when I left here with an Omni that had no motor and trans in it was um, to take this back. And I want what I wanted to do was build a, uh, a T2 1987 that, and you guys know, so that I could then swap that into my Omni and then get it California certified with emissions so that it would, um, it, I, I could get it certified and, and um, get it registered and stuff as a swap car and, and hope, hopefully it'd be legal. So what that required was for me to take this car and go back and see the fan, uh, Ben and Brian and the fantastic guys back at the car farm who offered up to help me do that. And so we, I got to go around and you guys saw some of the videos. I got, the, I think I caught nine snakes when I was there. One of them also, one of them very cool that I'd never caught before, which was a milk snake, which is, if you guys don't know snakes, it's kind of like, it would be that equivalent of, of, of our king snake here. So it's, it's a snake that will eat other, you know, venomous snakes and stuff in it. And, and it's a constrictor and it's really, really cool. And it's cool because I hadn't ever caught one before. And it was just, and it had just crawled into the shop. I was working on the cleaning the valves and I walked over and looked and saw, and I'm like, oh, why, why, <laughs> why is there a snake in the shop? Obviously, because there are mice and other things in there. And he's, he's cruising around going, hey, what's going on? Um, but it was very cool to catch him. And then there were lots and lots of other uh, garter snakes and stuff out there. But I went there. So the goal was go there, build a motor, get it in the car, and get the car running and drive the car. That was the goal going there. As it turned out, I had to have another goal. <laughs> that was to fix the broken transmission <laughs> that broke. I want to say on my way there, but technically I had already arrived. I mean, I, I had gone, you know, almost 2,500 miles or so that it took to get there. And uh, I had just pulled off the Ohio Turnpike to go on the road that it takes to go to where the car farm is. And I, everything was running okay. I was been, had been pulling the Omni the whole way there, pulled it on a tow dolly, you know, no issues at all. And I, after the work that, uh, and, and again, thanks to Oliver for the work that we did on the truck, doing things to, you know, prep it and get it ready to do. And, but after I pulled off that Ohio Turnpike, it said, guess what? I'm, I'm starting to make noise and I'm not going to go into all the gears. I'm going to have lots of different neutrals, especially reverse. Um, and, but the thing, the thing that was cool is we were able to find a, uh, not just a used transmission, but a rebuilt one from Summit that some guy was selling that he hadn't put it in his car. So it was still wrapped up. And it, it, so and we were able to do that. Thanks again to the guys at the a car farm. So we, you know, crawled onto there, dropped the exhaust, dropped the drive shaft, um, and disconnected all the, the electronics and stuff and, and disconnected the, um, the four-wheel drive transfer case. Just kind of, it stayed up there. We just kind of we're able to finagle it and, and get it out of the way and get the trans out and swap the trans out. And it worked fabulous all the way home. So that, that worked out good. And then the goal for the Omni, get it running and drive it. So, and you, and I have, I'm posting a video right now on build up of the short block. And then the next video will be the heads. And the reason I did that is because there's a lot of stuff that went into the cylinder head and camshaft part of it. Lots of cool stuff, including in the second video in the camshafts, what we did was, while the after putting the cam and the heads on what we did we took the rockers back off and then spun the um oil pump with the drill and then rotated the cam so you could see this particular cylinder head was a 782 um swirl head designed for the flat tappet or the the slider cams they call them, i keep calling them flat tappet cams um for the slider cams but it's got oil squirters on it so they got oil squirters that are aimed at the lobes and then so and and the the journals have um, slots in them so that when you rotate the cam, you know, it squirts two and then, and then it stops and it squirts the other two. So I showed that while we were doing it. And, and that, that was really cool. The other thing that we did that I'll, that I'll show in the video, because like I said, there's a lot of cool stuff. Um, the other thing that we did is we got a two piece intake manifold with injectors <clears throat> and it had the it had the wiring harness and everything on it because we we're going to put it on put it on this motor. And we wanted to test it. So I'm like, okay, we, it would be cool to be able to test the injectors because that's something that I do all the time at West Tech. Before, almost before we put any injector in a motor to run on the dyno, we put the injectors on that ASNU dyno or, or injector machine and flow them. 
we're just really wanting to make sure, you know, that they're fairly even and also that they're all working. Basically, they're all squirting. So what we did was, was this was a cool idea. Um, ben has uh, an 87 GLHS uh, charger. And so we walked out, unplugged his, plugged this in, plugged in the fuel line. And then, you know, you just have to turn the key and crank it over. And so you can see, because we have the manifold with the ports facing us that normally go into the cylinder head facing us, and you can see, uh, in this case, you couldn't see because they weren't firing, <laughs> you see whether the injectors are clogged. So we did what you always do with these things, and you just tap on the injector. And if we tap on the injector enough, they started going and started squirting, and you wipe off the, the, um, the nozzle area, the tip of the injector, and then, uh, you, you know, you're cranking, and pretty soon you can get them all to go. Well, <laughs> you know... That just tells you that yes, that that's that's a like an analog kind of thing. It's like yes or no that it's working, that it is spraying something. How much is it spraying? You know, is it clogged a little bit or is it not clogged at all? Um, and it worked fairly well just tapping on them. Now, when we do the injector machine, and if one's not working, we'll put them in the cleaner, and it, it just you know it it, it obviously is um, uh, cycling them uh, and it's cleaning them um, not electrostatically. What is the thing? Somebody tell me the word that I'm looking for on the injector machine. Um, but, and, and so we did that and that that's also going to be the video too. So it's very cool. So we ran fuel through them and then, but so before we put it on, we knew that all the injectors were firing and we could, you know, put that on there. And then we knew that it had oil pressure because we had oil feeding in there. Um, we didn't know about the turbo that whether or not that was going to work. Um, Cause all, all of this stuff was basically used stuff. So it, it all just went together. I, I put ring gap in the pistons before putting them together. You'll see I even did polishing on the crankshaft with a, you know, this is Super Richie razor blade rebuild. So you know how you know how I do it. I the my my machine shop was a consisted of um, Scotch Brite <laughs> and a Harbor Freight part of a Harbor Freight uh, ratcheting strap, and I just put it on there and looped it around and and spun it and, and it, it, it did it worked amazingly um and then i did the same thing with the cylinder heads we just took apart the cylinder heads and i cleaned all the valves off um with a wire wheel and lapped them all in and using a using a, a drill method um and that worked good so the and then we put all this stuff together and this, so you'll see all that and that's the reason that this is in two parts it's because there's so much stuff that happened uh, with the cylinder head and the rest of the assembly, you know, putting it together. So we got the short block stuff done. Now that's loading. And then the next one right after that is going to be the, the cylinder head and stuff. And then we, we also put the motor in, connected it to the transmission. That again is a pretty <laughs> big rigmarole because choosing the right transmission, this one actually had this car actually had been modified to put a cable shift in. And when they modified it, they, not just modified it, they changed the um, tunnel. Um, and so again, again, it was <laughs> everything that we were doing required us to do something else. So uh, we didn't surface a flywheel. We did the Super Richie surfacing on it. Same thing with the head deck. We, we did put headsets on it. As I said, we did put ring gap in it. Um, but, and the, the reason I'm we're talking about this tonight is that the when we put this all together and finally got it in and working got running and and this had a bad um, ignition module <laughs> you know like i said we were trying spark plug you know all kinds of things um but it, it finally got up was running good and and started up as i idled well and and took throttle and did all that stuff and then uh what i did was take it for we took it for a ride and so i all i wanted to do is for the for the video because the goal was take it there get the thing built Connect to a transmission, a stock T2. This had this had has a stock cat, stock exhaust, all of that stuff. Stock airbox, everything. Stock stock intercooler and radiator. Get it running and drive it. And so I just needed a video of me driving it. So uh, there's video of me <laughs> taking it down the road and driving it. And then so when you're driving, you're like, well, I wonder. You know, it feels like it's driving. Um, the gear shifting was terrible because that now the these cables in addition to whatever was done to the floor pan, which is going to be repaired, the cables that were in there now are were fairly stretched. So the shifting was terrible. Um, that's all going to be fixed. But right now it was difficult 
but you know you could just roll kind of roll into second gear or roll into third gear if you were able to get into that gear there's no speed shifting or anything i just wanted to see i just want to make sure that the turbo worked and it was going into the boost so you roll into it you roll into it you roll into it you know this making boost well i shouldn't say that you know this making boost i should say that you assume this making boost because it feels like it but there's no boost gauge on it there's no air fuel meter on it and all we did was eyeball the timing we never even put a light on it you, you kind of know by by the way that you do the timing out there, there's a bunch of marks on it. You're like, I put it on that one. That's kind of, you know, um, but the, that's the thing. And then and this is what happens with turbo cars and the same thing that, that Todd was doing. I did exactly the same thing. I went out and drove a car, went into boost on a car that I did not know <laughs> what the air fuel was, did not know what the timing was. Um, and you don't know, in my defense a little bit, this is a completely stock motor with a completely stock ECU, with a completely stock harness, and a completely stock exhaust, yada, 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 excuse, excuse, excuse. It's all of those things. Um, and I never went, I didn't go full throttle, but I did go into boost. So that, that's enough to hurt something, especially given the fact that our injector check <laughs> was nothing more than making sure that they sprayed. <laughs> and that's that's probably not enough. Um, so I did do that. And, and, and it's easy to see why uh you know because obviously people don't have access to the dyno and all the electronics and all the stuff that i that i often have access to especially when i go down to west deck um people don't have access to that so what do they do well they do what i did and this is what dodge 2.2 and 2.5 guys have been doing for years they they put in uh you know a stage two computer and a plus 20 injector they turn the boost up to whatever 14 or 15 pounds and that combination works until it doesn't um if you have enough pump in it but that's the other thing it had fuel pressure we could tell that the pump that we, we i don't know what pump is in the car i'm assuming based on the fact that this thing had a 2.5 in it with a big front mount and i was told it was running more boost um and it had a turbo upgrade exhaust mount full upgrade and everything was on before I assumed, <laughs> again, I don't know. I assumed that it had a fuel pump upgrade, a 255 or a 342 or something like that. Uh, and it probably does. But when we first hit the key, nothing happened. And then eventually it did happen. <laughs> so again, we're assuming that the pump was working and that it had enough pressure. We didn't put that on there. Um, we did check the Schrader valve. So when we turned it on, psh, you know, stuff sprayed out. So it did, it did have some pressure. Um, but all that, all this whole driving the car around was done without ever knowing all the things that I like to know to make sure that nothing will go wrong because I don't, you know, like I said, um, I, I, I can't tell you how many times I've driven cars over back when I, when, uh, Steve from powertrain dynamics was nice enough to let me come over and do dyno testing over his place. But we would drive over from my shop, which was right around the corner, just like literally, you know, just just one block away. Um, but I'd put turbos, weird turbo stuff. You know, I had a super intercooler that I got from trading for the Honda. And the super intercooler, because this was a, we drove over in the Del Sol and put a turbo on it, put this intercooler on it. And it had a probably a T3 from an SVO Mustang or something on it. The intercooler's hanging up out of the hood. So we just took the hood off. It had an open open exhaust because I didn't want to build another exhaust for the turbo. You know, so it was just like Mad Max kind of thing. I can't tell you how many times we've driven over in that or the 3400 Grand Am or any of the Grand Prix or any of the stuff that we tested that I drove over there and just never even thought about going into boost. I'm like, the first time it sees boost is when we start rolling in over on the dyno with everything hooked up, with the fuel pressure hooked up, with the air fuel. We know exactly what the timing is, all of that stuff. <laughs> and yet, <laughs> when I was driving the Omni, I I went into boost. And so I'm I'm obviously as guilty as everyone else. So when I'm telling you, do do as I say, obviously not as I do. Um, but when we're obviously when we're when we're on the dyno and we have one hooked up, uh, it's easy to know all of that stuff. Less so, I think, when we're. Um, so this will be a good pull. Uh, less so, obviously, out, kind of out in the real world. So this will be our poll for tonight.
out. Okay, so the poll for tonight is, <laughs> have you ever let it rip on a boosted motor without a proper tune? <laughs> so we'll see how many people, some people have to say. Um, so the Omni is still there. And I don't know if you guys saw the, they, <laughs> Brian made the mistake of painting the engine compartment. Because we're, I'm like, well, the engine's out already. Let's just clean this up, and um, so that we can, because we're gonna spread the the goal. As I talked to him, this this expanded into not just doing the motors. Everything's gonna be done. But I said, look, the, this is the engine compartment looks terrible. It's all scratched up, and it's you know it's just ugly. Um, and it had been resprayed, and there was different color spray paint and stuff on it. So I wanted to. Uh, just do something decent in there before we put the motor in. The motor's going to go in. It's going to stay in. It's going to be driven around a lot. So let's at least make that look kind of different, at least kind of decent. The problem is <laughs> that he made it look more than decent. The That Santa Fe blue color is by is far and away my favorite color for an Omni. He did that, and then he did clear over it. I'm like, oh, man. <laughs> the, there it goes. Now the whole thing has to be done. So the whole car is going to be done and it's going to be done in that color and it's going to look amazing. And then the, now, now everything on the engine has to be cleaned and detailed and painted and, you know, the transmission and all the shift cables. And now the interior, the interior is actually fairly nice on that car, but now I want to do, uh, cause we have some funny things that we're going to do, um, with making it a, 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 a GLHS clone in blue, which they never made. Um, so we're going to do some cool things with that. So now, now I want to change to, like Shelby interior and, and the Shelby wheels. I have the original like uh, pizza cutter wheels or whatever they're called, the, the ones with the holes on in them for the GLH turbo. But I think I'm thinking now about putting the GLHS wheels on it for, if, if we're doing GLHS um, because now after doing the engine compartment and looking at the cross member, um, the K member, uh, now Brian wants to take that out. <laughs> You know, re, like I said, and re, redo it. That's the, that's the problem. Is you like, oh, I need a new radiator cap. So I take the radiator cap. Oh, that radiator cap looks really good. So now I got to do. I got to repaint the radiator. Now I got to do the intercooler, and then it, then it becomes a whole restoration. And and that's kind of what's happened with this. Although I'm okay with that because it's going to be an awesome car, and uh, it's it's a kind of car I've wanted all the time, and it will allow me to do lots of stuff, uh, lots of testing with it, and and just drive it around because we're putting putting AC back in it and stuff because this is an original AC car, an original rear wiper car. <laughs> all, all of the cool stuff that you see when you're, um, you, and, and learn when I was out there. Cause it was awesome. They had, they basically had everything, every kind of T version. I, that was the first video that I did. They had T1s, T2s, T3s, T4s. They have the Maserati stuff. And so they're doing some really neat things. And um, so now I think the goal might be, I have this 2.5 that came out of here. So now I'm going to, we're thinking about fixing that up and, and maybe putting it in something and making it go fast. Cause I'm not going to do that in my GLHS. Um, it, it'll be faster than it is than a stock one. Eventually after we go through all the stuff to make it right. But uh, that would be more of a race car thing. I'm, you know, cause I'm thinking something that's five or 600 horsepower or something like that on that, on that motor. So it'd be cool. So like forge internals and all of that stuff. And then, and then not just doing a Richie razor blade rebuild, um, Brian also does really good head porting. In fact, I brought two heads back with me, stock ones. I brought a bathtub head and uh, or, or the G head, the OG head, uh, and, and a swirl head. I'm going to flow test both of those at West Tech. He's, he's doing ported big valve versions of both those heads. We're going to flow both of those. Those are heads that I can test and run on the dyno. Hopefully, Visard will uh, get that other head that he's doing on there. Um, we can see you know, what kind of flow numbers that we have, what kind of power gains we get. Um, we're going to try to run, uh, find out how much a roller cam is. Cause one of the cool things, and this is one of the tests that Ben did is that they measured the, measured the weight of the slider follower and then the roller follower. Um, and I was thinking, cause normally when we associate it, we're like, oh yeah, flat tap it. <laughs> that weighs less than a, than a roller, but the roller follower actually is weighs quite a bit less than the slider does so in doing a and this is one thing i want to do doing a roller upgrade on that uh roller cam upgrade the problem is you'd have to have a roller cam that's exactly like the slider cam they have and that's probably 
the cams will be close, but they won't be exact. But doing a roller cam upgrade on a slider in this 782 head goes both ways because it, it, it came both as uh, originally with slider cams and then, then they went to roller cams. So if we do a roller cam upgrade on it, it will be interesting to see if the roller adds power or because uh, I'm certain that if it's if it weighs less, it might add RPM. Um, I'm I'm curious to see how much of a of an upgrade it has. So those are some of the things. I also want to test the pressure drop and temperature drop on the stock T2 core, and then demonstrate if we need to what other you know bigger cores are worth and what the exhaust is worth and you know all those things. We kind of covered some of that stuff. So we'll see what you guys have going on. How is our How's our thing doing? We got 63 votes. We have 131 people here. You guys need to. You, need, you guys need to vote. <laughs> have you ever put the spurs to a turbo? And it can be turbo anything. It's not. Not. We're not talking specifically Omni, on an LS or a small block, a small block Chevy, a small block Ford, a big block. Have you ever put a turbo on or a blower on or whatever, and just went out and <laughs> and made it happen without the tune being exactly spot on. So uh, let's see what so let's see what you guys got going on. <laughs> Ray Manny from Mexico considered a rear wiper to be the true mark of a quality vehicle. It, it's true, right? And in Mexico, they have the cool, um, they have a uh, another T3 vehicle that we didn't get here in the United States. Just finished the supercharged 1Z swap Supra the other day. Got the basement up close and I sent it. Made it a little rich. It's getting close. It's an animal. Cool. <laughs> to find proper tune. Uh, does by accident. If you have the proper tune by accident, it's still the proper tune. Uh, Barry, you voted no because you don't have a, you've never had a boosted motor. But you could do it on an NA motor, too, because it's easy to ruin an NA motor because more... Too much timing or and or not enough fuel will ruin an NA motor <laughs> not quite as quickly, but almost. I told you about my Ford Aerostar that I turbocharged and didn't have a tune on it, but you but you didn't believe me. I still don't. I, I want to know how you go put boost on something and and just drive it like that with stock injector size and no change in timing and it and and it can work and then, and then it breaks. The Phantom, okay, a two door LeBaron with a C three. Yep, those are cool. I street tune pretty regularly, and you have to start somewhere, so you start off light and work your way in heavy. And that's what we do on the engine dyno. What we do is we start off, we, we've obviously, we first take the timing out of it. And so in the case of Todd's, he had all the timing in it. Like, he had 26 degrees of timing at 7 pounds boost. <laughs> that's, that's too much. <laughs> that's not going to work. Um, it's not going to work for very long. Uh, and so, um, you know, that's an easy way to break things. But uh, in contrast to that, if you have 10 degrees of timing at seven pounds of boost, you can get away with a lot. And that's where we start. We start on the very conservative side with timing and then figure out what our air fuel thing needs to be. Do we have too much? Do we have too little? Whatever it is, make it make a nice little curve that looks fancy on the graph. So if somebody else looks at it, and they go, oh, yeah, that's, that's nice. It's all sexy and curvy. Um, and then we do that. And then, then we start adding timing to it. And then we start, once we get those right, then we start adding boost to it. Because when we start adding timing to it, you know, at 10 pounds of boost, let's say that we have 20 degrees of timing at the top, at the horsepower peak, and then less at the torque peak, and then less even down low. As we go up in boost, it, the timing will come down. That's what normally happens. And so you can scale that. And then obviously for, for fuel, 
as you go up in boost, you're adding fuel. So you scale that up. And then so we'll after we get everything right at one boost level, which is exactly what I told Todd, he was talking about hooking up a, um, a boost controller or that he has a boost controller. And I haven't done boost control with the Holly. I just have we just have never run it only because we have another kind of boost control of the TC1 that's already hooked up to the dyno. And so it's very easy to just to hook that up. Um, but I just told him, I said, look, just just run the wastegate, just run a line to the, the bottom of the wastegate and just run it at one boost level and then get everything right. And then you can work on 10 pounds and 15 pounds or what, how many ever pounds that you want. But get that right, get a, a point, get the NA thing right, get some sort of low boost thing right. And then, then you can scale that up fairly easily yeah, and then get the boost controller working. Because sometimes with boost controllers, it sometimes takes a while to get it exactly right to get, especially if you're running multiple levels, if you're running five pounds, six pounds, 10 pounds, 20 pounds, whatever it is, getting the scaling right on the duty cycle for boost controllers can sometimes be take a little bit of work. And so <laughs> it's like, okay, that's not very much. Oh, that's all of it. Yeah, that's, and then so that your tune has to be spot on. Your controls have to be in there to stop the thing from, oh, where's my overboost protection? Where's my timing protection? Where's my temperature protection? All those things need to be in there. So there's a lot of stuff that has to be taken care of that you can take care of at very low boost and safe tune before you start going up to more stuff. Uh, Richard, will you give a quick rundown of the return trip from the Dodge firm? I hopped in a bit late. Had the Chevy. The Chevy worked like flawlessly. It, it ran all the way back without any problem. I did a short trip, a uh, short trip, five or six hours from the farm down to Brian Tooley Racing and stayed the night there and then drove home from Bardstown, Kentucky, uh, back to here. So it, uh, it worked fine on the short trip just, you know, went in all the gears and we had driven around, um, uh, you know, 10, 20 miles or, or whatever, um, in, in town and on the country roads and, and that stuff around the farm. And it all seemed to work good. It shifted in all the gears. Um, once we got the, the level full, that stayed good. Um, it um, went, went in through all the gears, went in reverse, the, uh, the new lockup converter worked flawlessly. It, it all it, that was all very easy. That was just like you know, because out there the the um, speed limit could be as high as 80 miles an hour. But I think I set the cruise at about 75 and just motored and just chewed up the miles. Uh, I was a little more concerned with getting better mileage, which the thing was doing about 19 and a half. Uh, less in some of the hilly parts, but the mileage seems to be a little better now than it was with the old trans and, and the old converter. Uh, anyone ever tried porting a 93 to 95 Lincoln Mark 8 manifold? I like the design, but they become restrictive too quick. Um, a lot of that is not a flow restriction thing, as, as it could be a runner length thing with those, which is why back in the day when they were doing, because that's like the 96 to 98 Cobra stuff, um, they would cut the runner lengths on them. <laughs> Purple Monkey Richard, now that you've caught the 2225 bug, you have to start tuning like true 2225 enthusiasts. Increase the boost until the head gasket blows. Then back it off a couple PSI. That's like strip bolts too, right? You you, you torque it till, it till it strips and then back it off half a turn. Uh, back in the day, I turboed my D16 with 14 pounds. Oh, a 14B turbo. All I used was a 255 and a Vortec. Uh, we ran lots of stuff back in the day with FMUs. That's the way that all the supercharger kits came. But we uh, would put uh, boost retard stuff on them. Um, MSD made them and Crane made them. They made the boost retard thing so that you could turn it down a certain number of pounds uh, or a certain number of degrees of timing per pound of boost. All I had in the 90s was spark plug reading, mostly blown electrodes. Yeah, that's a little too spicy. I need to back it off just a little bit. Uh, Brian Julie Racing, those, yeah, those guys are really good guys. <laughs>
Todd, you do it. You're about to push the pedal through the floor. That's good because you need more than wide open throttle. You need wide open throttle plus 10%. Uh, Paul, Richard, I can't seem to find anything. Have you tested a Holly high ramp for a Ford versus common manifolds? I haven't. I The closest thing I've come is I have tested way back the YN tunnel ram. And then guys way back in the day made a box that goes on top of that. It looks an awful like, off lot like a stealth ram on small boat Chevy. But they made a box for that, and they called it a Flowmaster intake. A lot of guys don't even know about that. But they did that. It'd be very similar. But I, I suspect that a high ram is going to do what it does versus these other long runner manifolds, it, it, like on the LS stuff. It's going to be uh, maybe more power up top and less down low, certainly than these long runner like trick flow manifolds. Uh, Todd, did you get your stuff running today? Break up a long chain of rope with Scotch Bright all through it and pull it through. It works. I it, it, it actually polished them uh, a lot better than we thought it would. It worked very well. And then when the guys saw the uh, the valve grinding stuff, they like <laughs> valve grinding the valve polishing stuff. They they like that as well too. Okay, come on. Sometimes it likes it likes when I'm close. Close. Stop freaking out. Uh, no, Todd, I told you that I, I did talk about you today because that's what brought this all about. But the um, the the topic tonight was about me and the Omni, you know, because there's nothing I like better than talking about myself. <laughs> okay, you just did the valve cover gasket. It's not leaking. That's good. I have a customer with an SM95 with a Vortec blower that sells an FMU and a BTM. <laughs> I tried to get them on the real engine program. I did that for a long time. I, in fact, I ran mine at the Silver State at Wide Open Throttle for more more than 35 minutes. And in fact, the whole race was 42 minutes, but um, that that part of it until I lifted off to go through the narrows, that was 35 minutes at Wide Open Throttle. <laughs> Devin, Richard, I have one for you. In, in your experience, if you have a motor that likes more ignition timing, will you end up with more timing under boost or will you pull even more? A more, more NA would usually mean that you can get away with more um, boosted or that it will want more boosted. Because it's more a factor of, like, if you've got something that has a giant combustion chamber or the piston's way down in the hole. Like, the, a good example is... I'm going to suck freaking out so much. Um, a good example are the 317 heads that we run on the LS stuff. A 317, it usually likes one or two degrees more timing. It usually makes best power at a couple of degrees more timing than a 799 or a 706 head does. So that means that you, it, not that you can get away with, but, but it will respond best to a little bit more timing also under boost. Yeah, Todd, if you don't scatter the motor with the bad tune, then with a good tune, it should be all good. That's right. A friend of mine has a twin turbo five liter Fox with an FMU built back in the 90s and still has the same tune. And those things would just drown it. I mean, the and, and then they would start getting better because the fuel pump usually would go away. <laughs> you go up to 100 PSI and the fuel pump would go. I really don't know how that much fuel. I can't do that very well. And so the thing would get like when you'd nail it, especially on these 10 to one and 12 to one FMUs, it would just jack all the fuel pressure and it'd be like a hundred PSI and where the fuel pump could keep up. And then what you'd have is later on, the fuel pressure would be falling as you go up in RPM. Cause the fuel pump just says, look, I, I can flow fuel, just not at a hundred PSI. Let's see, you've got a head for the 2.5 freshened up that'll drop in a Daytona charger and run it at Bonneville. Uh, a, a Daytona for a 2.5 would probably, I need to look at the class. Um, 
I think they have, somebody has set records out, out there with that car. That that wouldn't be the car and motor for that class that I would pick. There would be better choices for that. Although maybe I'd have to look. I, I haven't looked at the um, records in a long time. Maybe for production supercharged, that might be good. Anything comparable to a fast manifold that's not as high as a TBS or truck manifold? Uh, nothing that's going to be com comparable to a fast manifold. The MSD manifold on a cathedral port, um, the Dorman LS2 is comparable to a Trailblazer SS, but it's short like, a, um, like, like the fast manifold is. It doesn't make as much as a fast, but it makes as much as a Trailblazer. Yeah, Todd, I think the thing that helped you out is is how much um, correction you were allowing, <laughs> allowing 100% correction. Um, yeah, because you were your um, desired air fuels were way off. There's a lot. Of, there was a lot of things that we did. Is it worth trying to mess with an E4 on my 93 when I go boost it? Yeah, you can do lots of stuff. I ran my supercharged Mustang for years and years and years with a factory ECU. And it works fine, especially now. This is before you could do any tuning with a factory ECU. You can do lots with it now. Uh, you can get a different disc. Yeah, they made interchangeable discs for the FMU so they could change the ratio. <laughs> Many head gaskets are replaced. Lots of guys replacing head gaskets on the 2.2 stuff. Um, ultimately, like the 2.5 that I'll put together, that will be done right with the right um, surface finish for MLS gaskets. Head studs. Who knows? I might even look into whether or not they have any like CA625 head studs to see if there's something that's comparable or that they could be drilled out and retapped for something, you know, maybe maybe get after this thing a little bit. Because uh the I took a look at some head flow numbers that Brian from the car farm had from heads that they did on a flow bench. It's pretty good. Did you blow the Omni up? No, I didn't. The Omni's fine. I just, just drove it around. Um, uh, Dean's being esoteric again. What's the maximum dynamic compression ratio you recommend for 93 in the USA or 98 in Australia? National that's, Aspirated. That's actually the wrong way to think about it. Um, because that's not the thing that determines detonation. That's one of many, many things that can that can affect the detonation level. Dynamic compression isn't the only thing. Um, how, how the what the surface texture is, how smooth it is, what the shape of the chamber is, what your air temperature is going into the motor. Um, there's lots and lots of things. Uh, the what the quench is like. There's lots of things that affect what the detonation threshold is, irrespective of the dynamic compression. So that's not the only thing. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I, I think you should tune it before you, before you stand on it. Tune it before you moon it. Sure, huh? Uh, I mean, Lexington, Kentucky, if you're out, I, 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 we went by Lexington. In my travel, I went by the whole United States in my travels. <laughs> you ever heard of a Buick Start Car? Yeah, the, I have the SR71 stuff. Blew up so many, they had to buy all the junkyard ones. I think that that's actually a myth. Um, I would like to see that that's the case. I remember reading a thing about that about them going through all of the Buick motors in the wrecking yard. I don't think that that's accurate. I don't doubt that they blew them up, 
Um, but I think that the all of them thing is an extrapolation from, from there. I think it, it makes the tail a little bit taller. Richard, have you, or do you plan to do any factory LA or Magnum cylinder head testing? Yes, I have that Magnum. I have the 360 Magnum, so we'll do something with that. The Omni did get head studs. So it got, it got ARPs in it, but it got, um, I don't know, I have to ask Ben what kind of head gasket we got. We had a Kometic, but we didn't put that on there because the surface finish of either the, that head, and, and we just scraped both of them. Um, so neither one of those were prepped for the Kometic, so I just didn't put it on there. Yeah, Karen, the extra injector deal. The the um, HKS used to have those AICs, the additional injector control. They those were all the thing because when you had all the HKS stuff, you had about five or six thousand dollars worth of electronics, but it looked cool in your dash because you had all of these all of these like sub controller packs that were <laughs> helping you get stuff done on on the old turbo stuff. Uh, special agent, I have not gotten the head from David yet. I need to send him a message and find out what's going on. Does a five lug Dodge charger have performance potential? What year is it? I'm, I'm running 9.3 to one compression in my L36. 90 dock chain, 25 pounds of boost with custom chambers and softening quench. That, that's good. You, if you're running, if you're running that much boost, you should put the 85 in if you can get it. I think part of how a stock engine management deals with boost is it has an knock sensor or pull timing. Um, it will if it senses detonation, but the thing that you don't know about whatever stock thing that you're talking about is you don't know what the parameters are for timing retard. You don't know if it, does it yank 10? Does it yank four? Does it yank four and then five and then six and then more and more if it keeps hearing it as it cycles around? Um, how fast is it doing it? <laughs> does it keep taking it away and, and save the engine or does it take it away and go, okay, now you're on your own. Um, and especially this older car, this, the, the Dodge Omni actually has a knock sensor and, and they relied on it fairly heavily, which is, kind of impressive for the mid 80s um and this one had the knock sensor hooked up and stuff the interesting thing though is the knock sensor is plugged into the intake manifold which i thought was kind of interesting i was surprised that it wasn't in the in the head or the block uh first time catching a live i represent mopar mustangs and minivans for no name nationals cool A turbocharged M20 BMW E30 was unable to get ARP studs last season. Supply chain, yeah, they it is tough. Now it's studded in O ring, good. I think it's an, an 87 charger has lots of potential, and and really whatever. That's not, I mean, those aren't technically K cars, but the any of those kinds of cars with 2.2s or 2.5s, those motors have a, can make a lot, make pretty good power. Not as much as the T3 four valve version and not as much as a, an SRT4, but certainly they can make good power. And because the Omni is a 2000-ish kind of pound car, it doesn't take a lot of power to make them go fast. Uh, LCXU, you have the mid-rise manifold that you're talking about. Is that a, is it a Holly mid-rise intake manifold? Because you could you could do a lot better than that manifold. I mean, look at all of the tests that are that I have up on that one. That that's the that's kind of the lowest performing one. What do you need to run E85? You need more injector flow, more pump flow, and then a lot of guys like to upgrade the, the subsystems that are connecting the pump <laughs> to, to the injectors. Um, so that it doesn't hurt the fuel fuel lines and stuff. And then you need to tune it because you're going to need to supply 20 to 30% more fuel.
Richard, I have a Pontiac G6 with a 3.6 VVT. Any tips or tricks? Um, all the normal stuff, an air intake, a, a, you know, an exhaust. Running boost on it, you could do. I just don't know about the tuning for the boost. Eric, uh, the 53 L33 I've got in my front yard has a rotated lifter. Yeah, that's the 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 tray wearing out, and that's that happens under real high mileage stuff. But it's easy to fix. I mean, cams cost nothing. <laughs> you guys probably give you a camshaft. Dan, I'm back. Yes. What is the the no name national? Is it a is it a race? a group getting together and you can run whatever you want. We have a 71 Dark Custom, 71 RT Charger, 97 Mustang, and an 05 Mazda. Good, all of those are good. Is the 05, the Mazda's not a, um, oh, that's a millennia though, right? Do you know what the record ET is for the Holly Super Sniper on LS? What What is, yeah, you got to tell me what Super Sniper is. I don't know what that is. And, and, and I won't know anyways of whatever some kind of specific record that is. Richard, did you have a chance to look at the Eliminator? Is it, is it a boat? I didn't look. If you sent me a picture of it, I haven't seen it. What is your opinion of Ford 7.3 gas motor? Um, I, it seems to be making good power. Guys are doing a lot of testing with it. It seems to be doing well. I mean, it's big. And it, it, the head, I know with ported versions of a head, it, it can flow pretty well. And guys now have intake manifolds, like short runner kind of intake manifolds, like high ram style stuff. Brian Tooley's got one. The guys from Texas Speed, I think, have one. And so you just run boost on something like that, and it can make, make good power. My Turbo LS VTEC Civic runs on E85. makes 709 wheel horsepower at 30 PSI. That's a lot. Got VNM said if I run a turbo cam first, then I can select torque converter and thank you. I don't know, Danny, I don't know what you're saying. Um, just tell me what your combination is and we, I can tell you what kind of cam or show you, direct you to a video with actual results that tell you what's going to happen. Uh, Holly Manifold will need to make it look old school. Okay, yeah, I, I get you. Have you found that advertised cam RPM range numbers accurate, all things considered? I don't know. No, I haven't. People think that if it says 1,500 to 6,000 or whatever, that it's going to make lots of power 1,500. That's not necessarily the case. It will make whatever power curve it makes, but the what you'll find is the higher that the top number is, the less power it's going to make at the lower number. Just because it will go to wide open throttle in all of that range doesn't mean that that's the operating range. The operating range is going to be much smaller than, than what they're calling out there. It will still make power and it'll still work there. But if you have a 230 cam and a 5.3, it's going to be best at higher PM. You need 500 subs to race in Sykestown, Missouri. My plans for the Omni are to get it. Um, it's going to be completely redone now, basically. Um, and then get it uh, smogged and, and uh, ref and then registered and driven around. E85 made a huge difference in my turbocharged BMW. It does. All the turbo motors, blower motors, roots blower motors, centrifugal blowers, everything likes E85. I know I wouldn't do a lot of it on an NA motor, except some of them, like the Coyote and the LT motor, seem to get get some power from that. But not any of the LS stuff that I've run, not any of the small block Ford or small block Chevy NA stuff. It really did almost nothing NA. But when it's boosted, it picks up a lot. And there's, and there's a much bigger safety margin for that. Uh, 
Uh, Danny, I don't know what you mean by is it considered a high idol for a bigger camp? Factory Mopar, LA, Magnum head ports seem to be meek. Do the 18 degree valve angles make them perform more better? <laughs> I don't think so. They don't need it. None of the stock heads, the, the LA or the Magnum head is a, is a little better, but none of them are stellar performers. Like, and none of them are Boss 302 or Cleveland heads or, or an LS head. Uh, I have an 83 Shelby with, a, with an SRT4 swap. That probably makes power. Sitting at 1,800. That's good. My buddy's tuning a 90 Civic with a Jackson Racing Supercharger. I run lots and lots of those. Without an intercooler, yeah. I, <laughs> I have a video up where we ran the Jackson Racing and a Vortec and a Turbo uh, on a B16 Del Sol. And so you can see how much difference there is in power. It's quite a bit. Uh, Tyson, E85 will definitely help with that blower. It, it will like that. The other thing we did, we did a water meth injection, and it did bring the charge temperature way down. It doesn't add a bunch of power, but it did bring the charge temperature way down. So it would be less likely to detonate that way. your experience what is the safest level of horsepower to run on a stock 5.3 with an s475 an s475 is going to be about a thousand horsepower turbo so if you put ring gap in your 5.3 and you put a cam in it um you can use all of that turbo those were motor decent motors back in the day we'll be looking for a big intercooler on the army um, I, I won't run around with a big inner core. It had one on it that I took off when it had the other motor in it. It had a big, it has a gigantic front mount, which we will probably use if we do some kind of racing thing. Um, that will be a good, it looks like it will be a good core. I might flow it to find out, but it's, it's, you know, it's, it's like bigger than radiator size. <laughs> Have you ever tuned strictly for EGT and not on knock? N no, only because you have multiple things that affect EGT that are, you can, you can change the EGT with timing and you can change the EGT with air fuel. So that's not really, for me, that's not a good method. And I don't, I don't ever tune it on knock either. Um, we tune it based on uh, air fuel and then we know how much timing it needs or doesn't need from having tuned hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them. Devin, Richard, in your experience, are cast iron heads more detonation prone? I think that they are. Is running 85 require different injectors, fuel pump? Yes. Corrosion can be an issue, but more, more the reason that you would do a different pump and injectors, and if you're going to upgrade them, you'd upgrade them to ones that are compatible with the 85 anyway, but they need to be bigger because you're going to need 20 or 30% more flow for whatever power level that you're at. And more than likely, if you're thinking about putting E85 in, you're gonna also run more boost and stuff and more timing and make more power. So you need even more fuel flow. So I always go oversize on your injectors and your pump. You, th those, will, those things won't hurt you. I'm sorry, I'm lost. I'll look for your turbo cam video. No, Danny, I, I, I'm just I'm just asking you what 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 question? What are you trying to find out? I still don't know what you're trying to find out. Are you asking me what cam you should use in a turbo motor? If that's the case, tell me what the motor is. I don't even know where the starting point of all this is. So just let me know what you're trying to find out, and we will answer. You'll get the you'll get the answer here. It, it will be a lot of fun. I, I remember driving my, um, and I was telling the guys, I would tell Brian and Ben this, that I had, I, you know, I did a, I, I wrote a book on it on Ford Focus performance, but I remember driving my Focus with an F-Max turbo kit on it. And it made like, when we had it set at, I don't know, eight or 10 pounds or whatever, I'm thinking it made like 210 or 20 horsepower at the tire. And so that was, um, that car was a lot of fun like that. It, it's, you know, it's not a million horsepower, but it would beat up on a lot of the NA 
like <laughs> civics and stuff and i'm a civic owner so i know what i know how fast they are but it was a lot of fun everybody thought that they could beat it because anybody with a gsr or any of those cars back in the day they they would they thought it was pretty easy pickings to be the ztech focus and really it was although not with this turbo and so it was just a lot of fun and this car being compared to a focus i'm sure an omni's got to be seven or eight hundred pounds less than a focus and it might even be more than that but if that thing had 200 at the tire it, it would be a lot of fun uh noodles i so i've told you guys hundreds and hundreds of times about the trophies there are, those are all land speed record trophies richard stock coil pack sufficient to support 600 horsepower ls3 your ls3 your factory ls3 coils that you have are the ones that we run on the 1500 horsepower stuff uh as long as you can adjust the dwell we put it at four to four and a half um those coil packs were great and and the 600 horsepower is like oh that's like a yawn for them they don't even care have you seen a breakdown on the new edelbrock 4150 call, style carb i think brulee was going to be doing some testing on one of those i haven't seen one up close put a fish valve in it that's right fish valves for everything Although I get, I think I think the Omni stuff is not fish valve. They're they're Granger valves, or what they call those. Um, and this one had one. It just had a Granger valve in it. Although I would I would probably want a, you know, a Turbo Smart, a cool like. It's got to be blue too. Now apparently it has to be Santa Fe blue, um, boost controller. So Danny, you want a stock, you want a camshaft with a stock converter on a 5.3 for a turbo. I would pick a Brian Tooley Racing Truck Norris cam or something like that. Other people make cams that would work too. There's there's hundreds and hundreds of cams that work for that. But that's a pretty good cam on a 5.3. It will work with a stock converter. Uh, and, it, and, and, you'll, and I have videos up on running a turbo specifically with that cam. And you can make lots of power with that. Just picked the Dodge Omni. The guy claims that the cam went out and he said it would be easier just to buy a used head. What do you think? Should I rebuild the head or just find a used one? A lot of times you can find um, the head and the cam and everything. It just comes out as one thing. Because normally when they do, when the Omni guys do turbo swaps, that's what they do. They, they, do, they don't go underneath the car or anything. They unbolt the head, the whole, the head, the intake, and the turbo, all that stuff just comes off as one thing. And then they adjust that. But the, the, if you're going to do that head, make sure that it's flushed out really well. Cam should be easy to find. Do they use Ford E coils as an upgrade on the Omnis? When I did have two different drive shaft lengths and a wiggly mount, there's a torque, torque, torque steering. <laughs> the, the Omnis actually have equal length half shafts. Um, and then they have a center one, just like a Honda does. And I don't know about the coils. This just has a, it's just a single coil. So maybe I'll put a blaster coil on it and an MSD. Uh, what other cars do they have at the farm? They had um, a Newport, I think. They had a bunch of Dodge uh, Cummings trucks. They had some old, maybe power wagons and stuff. Um, if you look at the video, you can see some of the some of the other stuff. Um, he's got one called the Mooport, which is kind of cool because it looks like a, a cow. They have some 440 stuff, and uh, I think one of the trucks also has a 400, which is kind of cool.
it's finally the guy that went 13s in a caravan. We were talking about a caravan, too. I, I kind of want to see what Lucky and Tony did with their project, because they had a caravan that they were going to do some stuff with, and I don't think anything else has happened with it. So we were going to ask them what, what actually happened to it. So I need to, I, I have to send those guys, Tony and Lucky, a message to see what's going on. Uh, William, I don't know on the 290, I don't, the 300 I don't have, so that won't be for a long time. The 292, um, I think is ready to go back together. It's just a matter of time. Do you know what head is on the GLH? Yes, it's a 782 uh, swirl head, the head that should be on a 87. Three cars that I went to look at when they were new and could not afford it. Uh, 97 Integra Type R. Those are probably money now. 95 Mustang Cobra R. Oh, with a 5.8. And third gen RX-7. All of those are good. I, I, I would like to have all of those. Uh, oddly enough, the um, of those three, the, the Mustang, and I, I'm a Mustang owner. I have an 88 um, original owner. The Mustang would be the, the, the low, would be number three on that list for me. The third gen RX-7 will be first, and then the Type R, and then the Mustang. Uh, is 15 minutes at 2,000 RPM enough to break in a flat top? Okay, I'm going to stop this time because of the fuel pump problems. Um, I like to are you? I like to vary the RPM when I'm doing break in, and on a flat top cam, I wouldn't. I normally don't break them in at idle. If I if it's in the car, I like to drive them around a little bit just so I can vary the RPM. But when we break it in, we break it in. We usually do two cycles of 10 or 15 minutes, but it varies the load and the RPM. I have a lot of people tell me that micro engines blow up at 450 horsepower. That's not that's not a real thing. The 87 Conquest. I was a Conquest owner for a very short time, although I had the slab side one, not the one with the flares on it. Don't remember, but did you ever max out a GT35 on an LS? Uh, no, a GT35 is not going to make 17 or 18 pounds on an LS on, on one with a camshaft because that's about a 600 horsepower turbo. Uh, I did it on a GT45, and which is about a 750 horsepower turbo. Turbo on an Astrovan, working on a C5, LS2 cam heads and intake on, on L99, both aluminum. What is the L, what size is the L99? Is that a six liter? Can't remember what this, what the displacement is. Uh, L99 is a 6.2, right? So if you're taking it off the C5, which might be a 5.7, how much power loss transferring parts? Uh, it, it seems to me, if I'm reading that right, that you're going to be doing nothing but gaining power. An older 280Z for 4,500 bucks. I like those, and I like I the 280Z is probably um, the lowest cost Z that you could get into right now. The naturally aspirated ones before they went to the ZX, all of those are the prices are going up on those. Yeah, opinions are better than thoughts. An HOL99. I'm not familiar with that. An LC9, maybe?
Uh, oh, if you're going from a six liter, so we'll forget about that. If you're going from a six liter down to a five three, you are going to lose power. So the six liter makes it's going to make forty or fifty foot pounds more, and, and it's going to be better. I have a six liter versus a five three stock for stock video up on the thing. I ran a four eight, a five three, and a six zero, and you can see what they do, um, which one of them, how much power you're going to lose. It's going to be a fair bit. Oh, the L99 automatic version of the L3. That's what I thought. See, I thought it was a 6.2 and not a 5.3. Yeah, the 280s are being snatched up too. I, I would like to have one of those because I was originally going to LS swap uh, a 71.240, and now that, that's, a, that, that's a fairly pricey car now. What would be great to put a supercharged 3800 in it? In what? Other than the obvious Pontiacs, are there any fun bodies to do a swap? Uh the um the fiero you mean is that what you're talking about it i i would like that 3800 with a turbo on it to go in oliver's car and that nova would be that would be a good swap it just takes a lot of money because the ecu that would be required <laughs> richard you realize you have achieved such a reach that when you post a video of an engine, the corresponding price goes up, the car price goes up. I hate that about, I hated that about the blower thing when I did that low buck blower thing, like the prices on eBay were just ridiculous. Well, a new car I ever bought was a blue 85 Omni. The last turbo ran out across. G I'm sure that's GLHS. The the cars actually handle fairly well, although I'm surprised looking at the suspension. But it, it seems to work pretty well. The the blue one that I have has conies on it. Okay, first option to get a six liter truck engine and use LS2 cam and head. Believe the LS2 has spun main bearing. That that works good. The 240 is a, it will have a five speed going in it right now. It doesn't, and it had one that came out of it when it had the, um, the uh, L series engine in it, but we'll put a turbo L series with a five speed in it. Uh, Richard, what do you consider when choosing an engine oil in your junkyard engines? If it's an LS, I put 530 in it. My first car was an 87 Omni. So was it an 87 GLHT then? So we will close out our, have you ever let it rip? <laughs> it's interesting about half, half and half there. Well, not half and half. Uh, most of them are saying no. So we need, we know some of them are not telling the truth because they probably have, but 58% saying no and 42% saying yes. That was a good poll. Uh, four eights are not dish pistons, they're flat tops. Which is why people, that's the that's the piston that's shared with the HO version of the 5.3 also, because then they put the 799 or 243 heads on. Turbo Z auto rear pumpkin from the 80s. Uh, the R200s were good, yeah. And you can also put an R230 in it, which we might have to do. Um, and I think I think uh, Oliver might have one there that I can buy from him. So they run stock weight oil and a turbo LS. That's what we do on the dyno. I run I run 530 stuff. Live stream. Try some experimentation with the F136 Ferrari engine from the Maseratis. What were we looking at? Oh, we were looking at the um, thing that's weird. If you look at the video, you can see the, the I think we showed the piston from the Maserati version of the 2.2. Uh oh, you got bots, you got bots incoming. And you're deleted. Bots so plenty. That's right. Um, yeah, you can vary the. Uh, Dan was saying that you would 
when you would choose the oil when you're building a motor that you would vary it based on the bearing clearances the the factory stuff especially on a junkyard motor you don't necessarily know what the bearing clearances are um we put 530 in the ls stuff because that's what it would, it would originally have run um and it's always a good starting point uh sometimes on some high mods big blocks and stuff we might start like with a with a um 2050 or something especially when we may change it to a 2050 if the oil pressure is low, um, which it has been on some junkyard motors. And the real question is what percentage of the 42% didn't blow up their engines by sending it? That would be interesting to see, did it, did it work? My 87 had more colors from random doors and fenders. I've seen that before where guys just go to wrecking yard and just grab the grab the latest thing. That's the interesting thing that's completely different. The the guys from the car farm were excited kind of about working on a truck from California because they're like, oh, we're gonna be able to actually get all of these bolts and stuff off. They're just gonna come off, not with parts of the car. I remember watching the I had a guy there, I think I think it was Anthony, um, doing a brake job on one of the trucks from the farm. And he was doing and there was a there was a pile of rust underneath each one of those, and they're like, "Oh yeah, um, that's what happens. It's <laughs> just stuff comes off." And you can see, like on like on a lot of dodges, you know, the 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 fender well is just like just eaten away. Please don't put an LS in early Z. <laughs> Come on, it'll be fine. Actually, actually, what it should get is the RB. Remember the like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, or the like button. At least hit the like button. Hit the like. Hit the like. Go toward the like. <laughs> Go into the like. The Omni would still beat the same era Charger and Daytona. Those cars were a good bit heavier, except for the they had T3 Daytonas. Um, but the T2 stuff... The, the regular GLH Turbo Omni was not a match for a T2 Daytona, I don't think. Um, the car that I like that we raced, and you guys will see in the video, we did it, we set up a drag race, and I got to be the flag girl. <laughs> um, and I realized that when you see that, like on Fast and the Furious, the little the girl in the little skirt that, that jumps and makes them go, um, those, car, those cars must be pretty far apart. <laughs> because on this narrow road, I would have had to go sideways to let them go by. So I thought it's probably not a good idea. Well, boss brand Bonneville, there's salt and rust everywhere after a few. Yeah, it, it, you can't get that off. I mean, when you run at Bonneville, what everybody does is after they get off of the salt, um, some guys bring the bug sprayers and they'll spray everything off and do the best they can while they're there. But you can't, there's, you can't get it all off because it's going to go into everywhere. Because the other thing that happens at Bonneville is not only is it salty, but usually it's wet and salty. So it's not a good combination. So everybody after that, they take their, there's a spray car wash, which that, that guy's probably making mint, but there's a spray car wash and they take their cars over to the spray car wash. And then they sit under there and just slugging quarters in there like it's going out of style um, and try to spray everything off. And then I know when guys get home, um, I've seen guys put them up on stands and they'll put a oscillating sprinkler under it and just let that run for hours. I know somebody that drifts a Nissan 240SX with a supercharged 3800 and a T5 manual. That would be good. Um, I think that the um, interesting fun fact, I think that the ZXs, the turbo ZXs, came with uh, the back section of their transmission. I think it was actually a turbo 350. The best were Eagle Talon all-wheel drives. Those were good. I raced against the Archer brothers who drove the... Um, I will drive Eagle Talons and World Challenge, and I, and I was driving a Mustang, and I can tell you those were those ran good. My car is 1540 right now, and a lifter tick. Wondering if oil weight would change it. I think the tick would be more likely to go away with heavier weight, but you could try it and see. Go down to 020 and see what it does. That's of course like water. 
two JZ and the two forty. Nah, the RB would be better because it's Nissan. About to finish my 5.3 LM7 with Cadillac Supercharger, so I'm looking for another engine. Oh, the 3800 is good. I like the 3800. I'm I'm excited. I wish that um, Turbo Monza, come on, you need to get back a hold of me, otherwise I've got to have another seven heads ported. Um, I need to get a hold of Turbo Monza so that he can, um, I can get those heads back. I need to get the ported heads back. I think he was waiting to do bigger valves or something in it, but I need to get it back so I can run that test and and run the boost all the way up. Two more minutes, although I'm excited to be back. <laughs> slant 6. The Slant 6 isn't going to get very much. It's going to get, it has springs in it already. Um, we resurface the head and stuff. It's going to get a cam. It's going to get a few intakes tested on it. It's going to get a little bit of boost, and then that's it. 3.8 in the Regal with a turbo, the the Grand National or, or the Turbo Regal or the hot air one that came with the non-intercooled deal, all of those are good. And I like those body styles too. Good show, good show. Richard, what aftermarket, yours will be the last one. What aftermarket heads would you recommend for an LQ9 to make 500 horsepower easily? I tried ordering the 225 trickle heads, but they're back ordered. Um, you actually can do that with the stock heads. You can make 500. Um, if you look at the videos I have up on a six liter, especially on the LQ9 that has more compression, you can get 500 horsepower with just a camshaft, 500 horse, uh, flywheel horsepower with just a camshaft fairly easily. Um, and, and a decent intake manifold, certainly. If you want to go with the ported head, you could port stock heads. I wouldn't port the three seventeens. I would port some 799s or 243s. The guys from total engine airflow and lots of other people have those. Um, there are ported heads that people sell. West Coast Cylinder Head has stuff. Um, Texas Speed does. Brian Tooley has stuff there. Um, th you don't need a 225 CNC head. Take a look and see if they have the ASCAST 220 head. Maybe they have those in stock. That would that will certainly make um, that power very easily. And on that note, it's time to go. Thank you guys all for showing up. I'm going to try to load up the, in fact, it probably it was loading while I was here working with you guys. Um, the first video on the short block buildup on the, and then tomorrow uh, I have like six or eight or something videos to put up now. We have the drag race and we've got the head and the, and, and the painting and you know, all kinds of stuff. So it's all, it's all really cool stuff. Um, so I'm going to get that up. And so right after we get off here, I hope I can get that other video up and there can be lots of stuff for you guys to watch. Thank you guys all for showing up. I will see you all tomorrow. Choo, 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 and